podcast today with Lex Friedman and Elon Musk. And Lex Friedman basically asked him, you know, do you think, and it was asking him in the context of, I guess, um, uh, Elon Musk's project, which I actually will get to in a moment. Um, he was asking him, do you think that AI can ever get to a level where it will be self-aware? If you guys ever seen the movie Terminator 2, you know, Skynet becomes self-aware. And um, do you think, and then he asked him, a, you know, kind of a follow-up question, do you think it'll be, get to a point where it's, where it's, where it's conscious? So Elon Musk answered him basically, uh, yes, it'll be self-aware, but then he said, kind of with a caveat, he's like, he's like it depends what you mean by self-aware. Right, but because to Elon Musk, he you know I don't know if you guys heard he he kind of has been propagating the theory, and it's interesting because my father has been was telling me the same things we're talking like mid '90s, and he's probably thought of that stuff in the mid '80s and maybe even in the '70s that we're living basically living in a simulation, or the the the, the language that my father used was virtual world, and um, you know so this is something you know when I heard this from Elon Musk. Elon Musk, like, what, two or three years ago, I was just like, whoop-de-doo, you know, surprise, surprise. Everybody's like, oh, my God, like, this is the most incre incredible idea. I mean, it is an incredible idea, if you've never heard it before. Um, I heard it, you know, to me, it was like old hat. It's like it's like somebody coming, you know, to a rabbi and telling them, you know, let me tell you about, uh, I don't know, <laughs> the, you know, Parsha's Boratius in, 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 a, in a shot form, you know, or whatever, like, you know, the, the, the deeper meaning of the part, or like if you're like a, coming to a Kabbalist and tell him, let me tell about the Zohar, it's like, okay, man, like, thanks. <laughs> kind of know about it for like 20 years. So, yeah, so he basically said, Elon Musk basically said, like, he, he's, he answered, he's like, well, it depends what you mean by, con by consciousness. He's like, if we're living in a simulation, then we think, what we think we, is consciousness is not really consciousness, it's just high-level AI, right? It's just, he didn't use this language, but it's almost as if to say, like, Hashem created us, and he, and he put this AI, as it were, a really high-level AI into us, right? And that's our con that's what we think is consciousness, and that's consciousness, right? Um, so, I thought that was an interesting answer, but I think, and I would say, um, and, and what I'm going to say will lead me to, to speak about something else that Elon Musk is up to, um, I think that Elon Musk, unfortunately, and, and others like him are missing one vital component, is the fact that at the end of the day, yes, he's right. Even if we're living in a simulation, even if Hashem gave us that consciousness, we are, um, we still have what's something that's called a neshama, a soul, right? And, and, and obviously that cannot be quantified, it cannot be explained by sci the scientific method, and he actually mentioned that in his answer, he's talking about the scientific method. It can't be quantified, it can't be explained by a scientific method, yet. Uh, we can't measure it, we can't, uh, we can't see it. Um, but, you know, according to Jewish philosophy, we know that it lives on and it's eternal, right? It lives on, it lived before it got into our body, and it's going to live on after it leaves our body, as it were. Whatever that means, right? So, with that said, it's almost like he's t what he's talking about is still what I like to call... Um, brain-oriented consciousness, because he did mention in his answer that he said, well, think of a person who has any kind of brain, let's say brain damage, or anything that hap happens to his brain, whether it's stroke or this or that, he, you know, he goes, Elon Musk says, you know, this person loses, you know, kind of a portion of their consciousness. But the thing is, he's using, he's using the wrong terminology, it's not, it's not consciousness, they're, they're using a portion of their, I guess, brain uh, function, as it were, but he's saying that it's one and the same. Okay, even if it's one and the same, at the end of the day, for example, my father, you know, five years ago had a stroke, right? He lost certain portions of what his brain is, is capable of doing. It's interesting because he lost certain portions of it, but where he lost, and there's other portions where he actually, he actually, they actually increased. It's, it's almost like a, I don't know if it's, it's a compensation. I don't know how these things work. Maybe people who, who study the brain, who study you know, stroke victims, um, you know, they know more about these things than I do, but at the same time, like, you know, I noticed my father, he, 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 beca he became a little bit, even more so, able to think uh, in the abstract, you know, sometimes I talk to him and he tells me, 
stuff from a certain angle that I didn't see about business, about this, about that, you know, just things that I, things that I never would pick up on and also things that he normally did not before he got a stroke. Sorry guys, I'm just like really distracted because for, you know, I think I mentioned this before, Arabs decide at night to take their cars and their motorcycles and just drive down this quiet street and just make deliberately as much noise as possible. Sorry guys. I mean, yeah, there you go. See, we're talking about, talking about consciousness and <laughs> brain activity and, you know, my consciousness is fully aware of these guys almost too much to the point where I, I really get distracted and I really lose focus, um, you know, when I'm kind of honed in on something and I just hear, like, I'm very, maybe that's why I'm a DJ and I have, like, what's called absolute hearing, I'm very, very, very sensitive to outside noise, like, it, it drives me up the wall, like, if I'm talking, talking to somebody, if I'm, like, I'm, like, trying to focus and concentrate on something, and then there's just, just, you know, it's like, uh, you guys ever see the movie, um, what is that movie, with Will Ferrell, uh, where he's a news guy in San Diego, whatever, I forget the movie, so there's, you know, the character, uh, Brick Tamlin, so he's just like, loud noises, so that, uh, that's me, basically, right, <laughs> it's, just, it's too much, so, yeah, so he's, you know, my father, back to my father, he, he, you know, what I noticed that he, he got this extra level I guess the supra or extra consciousness after his stroke, right? And and obviously was he he lost you know for example like he has he still retains his long term memory so he can remember I don't know the the roster of a particular sports team from the seventies in hockey and soccer right, but he can't remember where he put uh, this that and the other important document or wallet or whatever right. So now we're talking about long term memory versus short term memory. Okay, so that's part of consciousness. But it's part of what I call first level consciousness, which is just kind of functional consciousness, right? But then you're talking about something deeper than that, which is the neshama, the soul. And even that thing has multi levels, right? Nefesh, you know, hida, whatever, you know, all, the, all these things that Kabbalah and Hasid, Hasidu talk about, right? And this is something in, that, in the discussion with, uh, you know, I guess Lex Friedman's discussion with Elon Musk. This is a crucial component that they're missing in this conversation, right? And even if I, I thought actually to maybe leave a comment on Lex's, uh, you know, on the video, but I thought to myself, like, even if I leave a comment and I mention all these things I just mentioned to you guys, I, there's no way I can prove any of this. You know, this is basically just, um, it's not conjecture, it's basically just, it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's obviously an ideology, it's, it's writings from our sages, it's writing from, writings from Jewish philosophy, um, you know, it's talking about the nature of the soul, nature, na the nature of spir spirituality, which is part of consciousness. It's an elevated level of consciousness, and uh, obviously, there are other religions or other or other philosophies that talk about these things. But again, these things have never been quantified; they've never never been tested in a in a scientific setting. At least not yet. We're, we're not. We're getting there, but we're not, we're not there yet. We actually, technically, we it's the year twenty twenty. We haven't even scratched the surface on that stuff. Uh, so. This kind of leads me into what I want to talk to you guys about, speaking of which, <laughs> something that I guess Elon Musk doesn't know or what he's not tapped into, or rather he, he's doing something, but he doesn't even know the importance of what he's doing. And that is, um, there are two project that he projects that he's doing, sorry guys, it's, uh, cops are everywhere, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, what in the world is going on? Loud motorcycles, sirens. I feel like I'm in New York, ladies and gentlemen. But it's not. Thank the Lord. Anyway, so there's two projects that Elon Musk is involved in, and they're both very, very important. And the reasons are important are, you know, the reasons I'm going to give are not the same, not the same reasons that he would give. So the first project um, relating to what I just spoke about is um, something called Neuralink. Um, so Neuralink is, so, is, is basically Elon Musk's project where he basically is trying to uh, harness people's consciousness. He's trying to take people's, what he thinks is consciousness, and transfer it, let's say after the person passes away, and transfer it into another, I guess, vessel. Right? or maybe store it on a hard drive, or store it on something, on a cloud, what have you. What the reason is, I don't know. 
Uh, the second project Elon Musk is, uh, you know, has embarked on is something called the Boring Company. It has a funny name, but what he's doing is he's basically uh, taking giant drills, and he just and I think he started this in I believe it's California. I could look it up, uh, and he basically is just drilling under the ground, and he wants to create a series of underground tunnels because, you know, um, for transportation purposes, and these going to be high s tunnels that that where people can go at high speeds. You're talking about trains and and, and, and automobiles, not planes. <laughs> it's like that movie, trains, planes, and automobiles. But no, trains and automobiles, and yeah. So, uh, why am I telling you? guys about these two projects you know it's not it's not just something some interesting sci-fi stuff it relates to a concept in judaism it's something that um is spoken about by rambam and it's basically one of the main things of that's required of a believing jew if you look at rambam's 13 principles of faith the last principle speaks about um you know you, you have to believe that the dead will rise, right? You have to believe that when the Shia comes, the dead will rise. We will experience literally of the resurrection of the dead. So what do these two projects have to do with resurrection of the dead? Well, if you think about it, if, if we're talking about, and I just mentioned to you guys at the beginning of this, of this video, that consciousness or the neshama does not die, so... This guy, Elon Musk, he's basically trying to create something that will enable a person's consciousness to not die, right? But but we say, well, Hashem already did that, right? Well, I don't know. Listen, uh, maybe, maybe there has to be some kind of process on earth, just like Mashiach. The process of Mashiach's arrival is a process. It's not like it's going to come in an instant once it happens, but... Things leading up to that are a process, right? And 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 we we are human beings are participants in that process. And really, Hashem can do anything He wants. He can He He can designate a, let's say, a Jewish uh, guy to create something like a Google or a Facebook or a WhatsApp to spread Torah all over the world. Obviously, there's other things besides Torah, unfortunately, that are being spread, uh, but also a lot of Torah, right? So if we're talking about like before Mashiach. You know, Torah will spread across uh, the world like, you know, it will cover the world like the waters of the sea. There you go. But he can also use a non-Jewish guy to accomplish what he wants. Which is the machinery, as it were, or the vehicles for something called Tiat um, By the way, another component of Tiat it talks about how um, the people who are buried in um, I think outside of Israel, once they resurrect, they're going to have to be, they're basically going to, it literally talks about how they're going to burrow under the ground, because there's, there's a conversation in the Gemara, in the Talmud, I forget which tract I'll post it, uh, the source on here, uh, between two rabbis, and one of the rabbis eventually goes, because the first rabbi is like, well, uh, what about the people who are not buried in Israel? Will they resurrect? So there was a discussion, there was, a lot of rabbis were saying, no, they won't, and then finally this one rabbi comes and says, I forget his name. He says, um, well, they will bury, burrow under the ground, under, you know, in the ocean and under the, you know, through, let's say they're in New York, they'll bury under the ground through the ocean and end up in Israel, right? They'll, they'll, they'll go from, you know, underground and, and rise in Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, what is that if not what I just described that, you know, what uh, Elon Musk is building? You know, he says that he wants to build it only in, I guess, in the continental United States. But listen, what's to say that he can't, he can't, build something that extends across the oceans, right? And now if we're talking about uh, <laughs> Miss Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who, who claims that she's Jewish, and, and guys, don't get me wrong, by no means am I sitting around here and supporting her, but if we have a woman, out of seemingly out of nowhere, a former bartender from the Bronx who comes on the scene as a congresswoman, and all of a sudden she writes up a bill, her and whoever else, I don't, I don't believe that she wrote it by herself, she's it's not intelligent enough, to where one of the, one of the, the um, I guess, ideas that she brings is, well, we should stop air travel, right, across the ocean, because we are destroying the earth. It's funny that she said that, because, you know, as you guys see, 
we pretty much accomplished what you wanted. Rather, Corona pretty much accomplished what you wanted. You know, she's probably sitting and sitting around and thinking to herself, "Wow, interesting." <laughs> so the Chinese really, really did what I I wanted, not what she wanted them to do, but she they really basically did what 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 she wanted. They accomplished what what uh, you know, her wish is their command, so to speak. I think it's interesting. She you know she all of a sudden this girl comes out and she propagates this idea that we 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 shouldn't be flying. Okay, so how else are you going to get across the ocean? Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. I know this is kind of crazy stuff to hear. This is like totally, you're probably thinking, this guy's out there. He's saying all these things about Tessa Mason and Neuralink and, and the boring company and Elon Musk and consciousness and da 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 da, da. Like, what? What you smoking, brother? Right? I ain't smoking nothing. I'm just having some tea here with, um, you know, some ginger and some lemon. That's about, it's not even tea. It's just hot water with ginger and lemon. So... Ladies and gentlemen, you know, that that's that. So, I think it's interesting. I think it's interesting what's what's happening now. Uh, I, I think it's what, what we're about to experience. You know, my business partner just made a video, and he basically gave a bracha to the whole world, and he said that, I really, really hope that we don't go back to what we think is normal after this thing is done, and we go upwards in not to something worse obviously but upwards into some kind of an elevated elevated state as uh, you know as human beings as a, as a planet really i say like this i'm a little bit cautiously optimistic i say i hope that at the very least <clears throat> i right now am only holding one group of people responsible for elevating to the next level and that is orthodox jews and that is people Jews in general, but especially people who are claim, walking around and talking about how they want to dive it in the minion, how they are connected to Hashem, how they keep Shabbos, how they keep kosher, how they this, how they learn, how they that, and we want to do minion, and we, you know, we want to endanger everybody by doing minion. I want you, you know, like Uncle Sam, I want you to elevate yourself, ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost. That's where I'm looking, I'm going to be looking at with my little... I spy with my little eye. I mean, also, I look at myself. Don't I'm I'm including. If you guys think, oh, you're judging people, I'm including myself in this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm including myself in this. You see, I'm including myself in that equation, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, okay? Because I always say, as as go the Jews, so goes the world, and and within the Jews, as go the Torah Jews, so go the Jews, the rest of the Jews. And then, as with the Jews, so goes the world, ladies and gentlemen. So I really hope that we can elevate to the next level. Um, and we're going to see some incredible things coming up, ladies and gentlemen. I think that all of this stuff that we're doing with technology and all of this stuff that we're doing, you know, with all of these things that seem like they're, they're coming out of a sci-fi movie, um... We're going to see how this all plays into the whole Mashiach thing. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got that Mashiach thing. <laughs> or Mashiach swing, as it were. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's enough for me. Uh, a lot to digest, a lot to think about, a lot to watch again and again and again because you probably didn't understand <laughs> the first or the second or the third time. If you have any questions about what I just gave over, feel free to ask. Any critiques, feel free to bash or at least to respectfully criticize and uh, or anything to add. Feel free to, you know, maybe add some sources, you know, whether it's videos or content you feel is relative, uh, relevant or Torah sources or Jewish philosophy sources. I'm more than open. I will post, by the way, the source from the uh, Talmud, the discussion of the, those two rabbis about, uh, you know, the burrowing under the ground, TSMASIM and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and yeah, so that is that. All right, guys, have a good afternoon if you're in New York, good night in Israel, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Shabbat Shalom.